And hello everybody and welcome to this afternoon's ball game. Actually, it's a late morning ball game. By the end of the, this one, it will be afternoon. It's Bradford and Arcanum. The winner will battle Versailles. Versailles winning earlier in a five run, five inning run rule game that defeated Greenville 12 to nothing here in the opening game of this King of the Hill tournament. The eight schools that are located at least partially in, if not all, in Dark County, Versailles, Greenville, Bradford, Arcanum, Ansonia, Mississinawal, Tri-Village, and Franklin Monroe. Seven of those schools are located entirely in Dark County. Bradford partially in Miami and partially in Dark County. But this is game two of the King of the Hill tournament. Bradford and Arcanum. Let's run down the starting lineups. First off for Arcanum, they will be the visitors this afternoon. Bradford will be in the field to start things off. Leading off will be pitcher Dominic Riggle. Luke Troutwine, the shortstop, will be batting second. Todd Barton, the center fielder, will be batting third. Greg Riffle, the designated hitter, batting for John Dick, will be batting fourth. Ben Garbig, the left fielder, will be batting fifth. Jason Byers, the catcher, will be sixth. Darren Rogers, the right fielder, will bat seventh. Justin Hayes, the third baseman, will be batting eighth. And Chris Sweeterman, the first baseman, will be batting in the ninth position. Well, we are just about ready to get underway. The umpire is going over the ground rules with both coaches, and they are heading to their perspective positions. The Bradford coach heading back to the dugout. The two Arcanum coaches heading to first and third base. Arcanum, of course, coached by Randy Baker. What? graduate of Arcanum and also played for the Legion team right here at Sater Heights Park. And as we said, Bradford and Arcanum. We are just about ready to get underway. The winner of this one will face Versailles. As we said, a 12-0 winner over Greenville. And quite honestly caught just about everybody off guard. No one expected a run rule game. And that opener, both teams having been the, won the previous two tournaments. This is the third annual. Actually, it would be the second annual, the third tournament. But everybody will still refer to it as the third annual. If it was the third annual, it would be the fourth tournament, but... I've confused you enough, so the first year would not be an annual tournament because it would be the first year. That's why it should be the second annual tournament, but that's neither here nor there. Dominic Regal leading off, and the count is 2-1. and one. Luke Troutwine awaits on deck. He will be followed by Todd Barton. That ball is given a ride, and that is off the fence in left center field. Regal coasts into third with the leadoff double to start things off here this afternoon, this morning, actually. Pitching for the Railroaders, Daryl Phillips. Luke Troutwine will step in. Arcanum on a three-game winning streak. They are six and four. Phillips readies, fires, taken high and tight, gets past the catcher and Regal into third base safely. So with no one out, Arcanum threatening here in the top of the first. A runner 90 feet away. A 
the count of 1 and 0 on Trout Wine. Phillips readies, fires, taking a strike. That evens it up at a ball and a strike. My name's Mark Bixler, by the way. We're glad to be with you. This video being produced by M. Bixler Video Productions. Phillips fires. That's low and away. It's now 2 and 1. Two one on the way. Phillips fires, and that's a swing and a miss. My trout wine and the count now even at two and two. Well, let's see if Phillips can get out of this jam. A runner at third with no one out. Phillips fires a bit tight, and it's as full as we can go. It's a full count now on trout wine. Three balls, two strikes. That is fouled back first base side out of play. It remains three and two. Now game two just underway. Our Canaman Bradford. That is taken ball four. So the first two runners have reached for the Trojans. That puts runners at the corners, first and third, Regal at third, Troutwine at first. Todd Barton will step in now for the Trojans. Barton will step in from the left side. Phillips the righty, ready. He fires, taken high and coasting into second. Looked like he wanted to draw a throw, but no throw made. Trout wine. Bradford's coach on his way out to talk to his pitcher. 1 0 the count on Barton. We are just underway. The first two runners have reached for Arcanum. Rico let off with a double. He is standing at third now. And at second base is Luke Troutwine. He reached on a stolen base. High and away. It's 2-0. Waiting on deck, Des designated hitter Greg Riffle for Arcanum. Phillips fires, and that is fouled. Third base side. So it stays 0-2. Opening day of King of the Hill Tournament. The King of the Hill Tournament. The opening game, Versailles shutting out Greenville 12 to nothing in a five-inning run rule game. Of course, this one, Arcanum and Bradford, we are scoreless, top of the first. Coming up next, Ansonia will play Mississinawal, and then in the nightcap of this quadruple header, Tri-Village takes on FM. Martin out. Strikes. There's one out. Well, unless we had a change, and that is possible, this should be Riffle, as that is foul. And indeed, no change, so it is Greg Riffle at bat. Oh, and one is the count on Greg Riffle. 
Phillips fires, and that is looped into right field. That will drop. One run will score. A second is headed home. So Riffle loops a single into right field and drives in two runs. Still one out. Runner at first and Greg Riffle. Two runs in, two nothing. Arcanum leading this. Top of the first. Throw to first. Not in time as Riffle is back safely. Phillips Reddy's fires. It is a bunt and they let it roll but it is a foul ball as it does roll foul. The Trojans here in the top of the first with two runs on two hits thus far. Throw back to first as Ripple in safely again. But we'll have to find out who Bradford is DHing for as a pass ball and Ripple coast into second base. back. He's DHing for the pitcher, Daryl Phillips. A ball, two strikes, the count on Ben Garbick. Round ball. Picked up by the third baseman, whips it to first. They get the out. But advancing. To third is Greg Riffle. Three, Garbig out if you're scoring with us, and Jason Byers will step in. Phillips fires, that's a bit high. So it's 1 0. Darren Rogers awaiting on deck. We had our cannon the other night at Tri Village as that is tight to throw to third. Not in time as Riffle back in safely. That, and that is going to score run number three as the ball hits the left field. Base hit by Jason Byers. Darren Rogers will step in. Trojans threatening. That is looped into shallow right center. It is left center. It is caught by Blake Maxwell. That ends the inning, but not before the Trojans score three times. After a half inning, it's Arcanum three, Bradford coming to bat. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville. The Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. 
Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville, Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home in New Madison, Montage Cafe located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Well, the Trojans with three runs in the top of the first inning. That's where we stand right now, three to nothing as we head to the bottom of the first. For Bradford leading off, it will be second baseman Luke Cruz. Center fielder Derek Heisey will be back. Be batting second, Sean Gamble, the left fielder, will bat third in cleanup. Pete Bubeck, the catcher. Josh Barker, the right fielder, will bat fifth. Blake Maxwell, the shortstop, batting sixth. Derek Dirksen, the third baseman, will be batting seventh. Lee Jess, the first baseman, batting eighth. And batting ninth, and the designated hitter, Chad Landis, batting for Daryl Phillips, the pitcher. Pitching is Dominic Regal, and he's behind in the count to Cruz, 1-0. Cruz fires, taking a strike, and that evens things up at a ball and a strike. Derek Heisey awaits on deck, 3-0. After a half inning of play, Arcanum leading this. That's fouled back, and it's now 1-2. The one two. Regal fires the tie and away, even now two and two. As we said, we had the Arcanum Tri Village game Tuesday night, twelve seven, final score, Arcanum winning that as Cruz goes out on strikes and there's one out. Terry Kaisey will step in now for the Rotors. Taken for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. Well, this one of four games, we've already completed one. A 12-0 win for Versailles. That means the Tigers will battle the winner of this one. And coming up, a couple of other quarterfinal games. It will be Ansonia and Mississinawa Valley coming up next. And tri and Franklin Monroe will follow in the nightcap of a quadruple header. Right up the middle off of Regal. Will there be a play at first? Sweeterman cannot get the throw. I don't think it was in time anyway. So leading, or rather, Derek Heisey with a one-out hit. Batting from the right side, Sean Gamble. In the dirt. Coasting into second base is Heisey. Three to nothing. Arcanum leading this. Regal fires. That's taken a strike. I believe it is a ball and a strike. One out. Regal the south ball fires. A bit high. It's two and one.
play back at second as in safely as Heisey. The scoreboard says one and one, so maybe I was off a pitch, but we did have a pass ball that allowed Heisey to move up to second, so that tells me the count is probably two and one. Taken a bit high. Regal ready, he fires home, and that is fouled back to the screen. Two strikes on Gamble. Trojans with three in the top of the first. We are in the bottom. Ground ball back to Regal. Throw to third, now in a rundown. Heisey, they make the tag. Well, a case where you've got to make sure when you're on base, you've got to make sure that the person fielding the ball throws it to first before you make your move to second. Five four, I believe Heisey gun down, so Gamble reaches on the fielder's choice, but now there's two away. And instead of a runner at second, the runner is at third. Or at first. The throw to first. Sweeterman takes the throw from third baseman Justin Hayes, and that completes the first for Bradford. They leave one stranded, and after one full, it's Arcanum three, Bradford nothing. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville, Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison, Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. One inning is in the books. 3 nothing. Arcanum leading this over Bradford. This opening round game of the King of the Hill Tournament. The third year of the event. If I'm not mistaken, Versailles winning the opening year. 1996, Versailles the champions. Greenville winning the award last year. So the defending champion is gone. As leading off with a hit is Josh Parker. But one of the two champions still in the tournament, Versailles, as we said, they won this thing in 1996, but Greenville coming back to win it last year, but this year, as we said, the defending champions knocked out as Barker slides back in safely. Trojans with three runs in the first. 
the leadoff runner reaching here in the inning, and that is knocked down and throw to second. They get the lead runner, four to six. If you're scoring with us, one out. So Maxwell, check that, that's wrong side. It's Justin Hayes that had the base hit, my apologies. He's out four to six. Chris Sweeterman reaches on the fielder's choice. We swing back to the top of the order. Dominic Riegel steps in. On the right side, Sweeterman getting a lead off of first. Phillips fires home, and that's foul down the third base side. So the count on Riegel. I believe it's even at one and one. Pickoff play at first. Sweeterman back in safely. Three to nothing. The Trojans leading this. There's one out here in the second. That is a foul ball down the left field into the left field corner. Ball and two strikes, the count on Regal. Regal doubled to lead things off here in the tonight's, this afternoon's ball game. Phillips readies, fires, taken in the dirt and gets past the catcher and Sweeterman will move up to second, takes a big turn at second, but will stay put. Goes to second on the wild pitch. The count two and two on Riggle. That a hit to left field gets past the left fielder. Sweeterman scores. Riggle rounds to second, heads to third. And will go in safely. Give him a base hit and then a two base error. Allowing him to reach third. Give him an RBI though. And the Trojans now lead it 4 0. One out, a runner at third. Troutwine reached on a walk last inning. Takes a strike on the outside corner, and it's 0-1. Three in the first, and a run here so far in the second has given Arcanum a 4-0 lead, and that, Troutwine thought about it, but laid off, and it's 1-1. One and one. Phillips fires. Droutwine takes a strike. A ball and two strikes is Todd Barton. Due up next, a strikeout victim last inning. Ground ball chopper picked up by the third baseman. Regal now will score as... Troutwine beat it out. Not only did the runner at third allow Troutwine to score, or rather Regal to score, 
or I should say allow Troutwine to be safe at first because the third baseman for Bradford, Derek Dirksen had to look the runner back. Now Troutwine will head to third as he will head home score or will he yes he will he is in safely as the ball gets past the catcher Todd Barton with the base hit in the RBI actually the we'll give him a base hit he goes to second on the throw actually an error on the right fielder allowed him to go to second And we will uh, we'll give Barton an RBI. We'll be kind in that way. Greg Griffel will step in now as Arcanum Now with two runs in here in the end, or three runs in, rather, it's a 6 nothing ball game. As standing at second is Barton. Trojans with three in the first and three thus far here in the second, and they're threatening for more. One away. Taken. It's 2-0. and oh. Six to nothing is the score, and that is swing and a miss. So the count is now standing at three and one on Riffle. Riffle a base hit and two RBIs last inning. Also came around to score, so a part of three of the six runs. Taking ball four, and that puts runners at first and second with one out. Ben Garbig, the batter for the Trojans. Garbing grounded out to third. That is taken. It's Phillips behind. Garbig, 1-0. Jason Byers, the catcher, awaits on deck. One away, runners at first and second for the Trojans. Phillips readies. Fakes the throw back to second, but back in. Todd Barton, as no throw was made. Phillips goes home this time, and that is popped on the infield. And in fact, will drop. Heading home for run number seven is Todd Barton and still the Trojans with runners at first and second. Well, I believe we are going to see a pitching change. I may be incorrect, but I believe that's what this is all about. Is coming into pitch number four, Josh Barker for the Railroaders. I believe that's number four. Yes. So with the pitching change, we will take a timeout. The Trojans with four runs here in the second with only one out. They lead it seven to nothing. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank with locations throughout Dark County. 
Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville, Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home in New Madison, Montage Cafe located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Josh Barker is on in relief of Daryl Phillips. As Barker fires his first pitch, taking a ball as Jason Byers, the batter, it's 1-0. And the winner of this one will battle Versailles here on May 8th. Swing and a miss. Count evens at one and one. Byers is batter number eight for the Trojans here in the second. Four runs already plated by Arcanum. That is a ground ball first base side near the dugout. So it's a ball, two strikes now on Byers. Versailles already a 12 zip winner against Greenville. Right now it's a 7 nothing ball game. Arcanum leading Bradford. Marker steps off the rubber, forcing both Riffle and Garbig to retreat to their perspective bases. Riffle at second, and now the throw to first is back in safely is Garbig. A ball, two strikes on Byers. Popped on the infield. That should be the infield fly. And I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but because I only had one out at that point. But nonetheless, the Trojans, with four runs regardless, and after an inning and a half, they lead it over Bradford, seven to nothing. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street, by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. My apologies as the scoreboard says six to nothing and they are right up there. We had a play at the plate on one of our Canham's runs and it appeared that the Bradford catcher dropped the ball from our perspective, from our angle, but apparently did not. And that would have been out number two. So Byers popping out on the infield would have been out number three. So, that being the case, one of the runs did not score. 
as that is hit up the middle on to first in time. So Josh Barker out four to three. That being the case, it's only six to nothing. Instead of seven. Riggle well. fires. And taking a ball is Maxwell ahead in the count, 1-0. That just misses, and it's 2-0. and Derek Dirksen awaits on deck. Riggle's not missing by much. 3-0 and is the count. Riggle fires from the windup, and that is taken ball four. So Maxwell drawing the one-out walk. Derek Dirksen will step to the plate now for the Rotors. 6 nothing. Regal readies, fires taken high. It's a 1-0 count. Flip to first, and Sweeterman does a good job getting that ball. Two balls, no strikes to count on Derek Dirksen. A runner on with one out. Riggle fires, taking a ball. Three and oh, the count. Game number two of four this afternoon. Riggle flips it to Sweeterman, but back in safely is Maxwell. Bottom of the second, Trojans by six. That is taken ball four. Suddenly, Riggle struggling to find the plate. Lee Jess steps in for the Rotors, and that's fouled back to the screen. And he's down in the count 0 and 1. Arcanum with three in the first, three more in the second. That's where we stand right now with one out in the bottom of the second and two runners on. That just misses. It's 1 and 1. Regal ready, fires home, and that is a strike on the inside corner. Well, I'm hoping my voice will be able to last two more games. We still have most of this one to go through. Regal fires, and that's popped into shallow right field. That loads the bases with only one out. Lee Jess with the Texas Ligger to load the bases. That is only the second hit for the Rotors. Stepping in from the left side, it will be Chad Landis, the designated hitter. Riggle fires and it's low and away. One and zero on Landis. A 
Well, I tell you what, a round tripper here, a grand slam, and the rotors right back in this. That is through the hole. One run is scored, will score a second headed home. He will score. And the rotors have trimmed this to a 6 2 ball game. So Landis, the seeing eye hit right there, drives in a couple. Not only do they have a runner at first, they still have a runner at second in Lee Jess. So back-to-back -back hits, a couple runs on two hits here. Regal fires and it's taken low and away. We swing back to the top of the order as Lee Cruz will step in for the second time. He is a strikeout victim from the first. This time taken low and away. Two balls, no strikes on Cruz. That is ripped. Picked up by the shortstop to throw to third. It hits the runner. That loads the bases again. Really, that was the only play for Troutwine at third base. Did not have a prayer to get the runner at first. So he tries to throw to third and it hits the runner. Cruz, he reaches on a fielder's choice, but more importantly, that loads the bases. Derry Kaisey will step in. He had a one-out single last inning, but then on a running boo-boo, because -boo, that is fouled back as Got himself in a rundown and was then tagged out at third. It's one and one on Heise as Sean Gamble will be due up next. Heise, the seventh batter of the inning for the Rotors, taken low. Bradford with two runs here in the second. They've trimmed a six nothing game to a six two. Regal readies, fires, swing and a miss. Count is even now, two balls, two strikes. Regal readies, fires home, and that is a swing and a miss. Fires hanging on to it, and now there's two outs. Well, Bradford, after really doing this after the leadoff runner grounded out to second, show you that walks can come back to haunt you. Both of them have come around to score. A throw to third, and they get the runner at third. They pick him off, one to five. That ends the inning. Bradford leaving two stranded. After two complete, though they have trimmed a 6 nothing game to a four-run ball game. It's Arcanum 6, Bradford 2. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville. The Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home in New Madison. Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville. McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville. Osgood State Bank with several locations, 
Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum, Versailles, and New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We head to the third with Arcanum leading by four runs right now, six to two. It will be seven, eight, and nine. Darren Rogers, Justin Hayes, and Chris Sweeterman for the Trojans. Arcanum with three in the first and three in the second to take a six-nothing lead, but Bradford battling back. They got a couple runs in the bottom of the second, making it a six-two ball game. Rogers up for the second time today. He's 0 for 1. Popped out to the shortstop. Back in the first. Lifted on the infield. And it is caught by first baseman Lee Jess. So one out. Justin Hayes will step in now for Arcanum. Starting to get a little cloudy. Not quite as many as much blue skies as we had for the opening game. That is a swing and kind of a half-hearted swing and Hayes falls behind in the count 0 and 2. First baseman Chris, Chris Sweeterman waits on deck as he will get a chance as Hayes goes down on strikes. There's two outs. Sweeterman will step in now for the Trojans. He reached and I believe he was one of the players to actually come around and score. That hits Sweeterman right on the back side. So Sweeterman will reach on the hit batsman. Dominic Regal will step in now. Regal is two for two. A double to lead off tonight, this afternoon's ball game, and also singled. Six two. Arcanum over Bradford here in the top of the third. Throw to first, Sweeterman, and it gets past Jess. Sweeterman will coast into second base, and that's where he will stay. So the error allowing Sweeterman the opportunity to move up to second. So the Trojans trying to get some... Two runs back as Riggle fouls that back and falls behind 0-1. Riggle up for the third time tonight. We are in the third. The 0-1 on the way, and that's a swing and a miss. So Barker coming on and doing a good job here tonight, this afternoon. Chopper, that is. Well, Sweeterman moving on to third. I'm not sure what the call on that. That is ripped down the line. Sweeterman will score. The throw to first. They get the out. It 
to end the game as 5-3. Regal goes out for the first time tonight. That ends the third for the Trojans. They leave one stranded after two and a half. It's Arcanum 6, Bradford 2. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville. The Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home in New Madison, Montage Cafe located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum Versailles in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We head to the bottom of the third as Sean Gamble steps in for the Railroaders. Falls behind 0-1 as one for a third inning is Dominic Riggle. Riggle fires as Gamble swings and misses, and the count is 0-2. Well, the 0-2 on the way, taken high and away. It's 1-2. and two. The Trojans off to a 6-0 lead after an inning and a half, as that is fouled on the third base side. Regal readies, fires, swing and a miss. One out. That is Regal's second strikeout, and he is, has back-to-back -back strikeouts. Actually, that's not true. Actually, in batter's face, he has back-to-back -back strikeouts. Although the third out of the inning came when Lee Jess got picked off of third base. Bubeck down in the count, 0 and 2. Up the middle, that will be a base hit. Bubeck rounds first and will stay put as he will retreat back to the base. So Bubeck now 1 for 2 on the night. And that'll bring up Josh Barker, grounded out to second last time. That is a swing and a miss as Regal gets ahead in the count 0-1. Blake Maxwell awaits on deck. Maxwell, one of two walks issued by Regal. Ground ball. Third base side, foul. Barker batting from the left side. Down 0 and 2. Regal Reddy's fires. Taken high. It's he now a ball two strikes on Barker. One, two, as Regal ready, fires, swing and a miss. Two gone here in the third. It's Blake Maxwell, the shortstop, will step in now for the Rotors. We're moving 
right along now after a slow first couple innings. He's picking up, the pace picking up a little bit as Maxwell down 0-1. He, as we said, reached last inning on a walk. He swings and misses and is now down 0-2. Well, the scoreboard says 0-1 as Regal fires. That is a fly ball. And making the catch, Luke Troutwine, the shortstop, to end the inning for Bradford. So Bradford leaves one stranded here in the third. After three complete, it remains Arcanum six. Bradford two. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville, Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison, Montage Cafe located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We are going to the fourth inning here tonight. This afternoon, it'll be Luke Troutwine, Todd Barton, and Greg Riffle for the Trojans. They lead the Railroaders here 6-2. Radford getting a couple runs in the second. Arcanum, their six runs, three coming in the first and three coming in the second. Luke Troutwine. Scheduled batter, but I believe we may have a substitution and it may indeed be Jeremy Lewis. Taken and it's now 2-0 and on Lewis. Filed back, and it's now two and one. Not a huge crowd, but for a high school game, it's a decent crowd on hand here this afternoon. And that is a ground ball picked up by the shortstop. The throw to first, not in time, and Lewis reaches. I'm not sure. We're going to go ahead and credit him with a base hit. I'm not sure that throw would have gotten there in time. As deep in the hole was Maxwell. Todd Barton, the scheduled batter for the Trojans. Stepping in from the left side. Now steps out. Back in the batter's box. Barker fires and kind of a half-hearted swing. Gave up a strike really to allow Lewis to move up to second base. 0-1 the count on Barton. Jess can't come up with it. Barton with the base hit, allowing 
Lewis to move on to third base. Greg Griffel will step in now with runners at first and third with no one out. Parker steps off the mound. Now gets ready to fire. Goes home with this one and that is taken. The throw to the plate and they will get the runner. Moving up to second, though, is Barton. So it stays 6-2. 2-4-2. That would go down and credit Barton then with a stolen base. Parker fires, and that's fouled back to the screen. Two balls, two strikes. The count on Riffle. Still a four-run ball game. 6-2, Arcanum leading this over Bradford. Parker sets, fires home. Ground ball, chopper. That is picked up by the third baseman. Flips to first in time to retire Griffel. That was Dirksen to Jess. 5-3, Riffle gun down for out number two. Ben Garbig will step in. That is the scheduled batter. Taking a strike. Garbing falling behind 0 and 1. The 0 1 on the way, and that is popped on the into right center field. Making the catch the right fielder. And after two and a half, it remains Arcanum six, Bradford two. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home in New Madison. Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville. McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville. Osgood State Bank, with several locations. Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum, Versailles in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. 6-2 the score as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Derek Dirksen, Lee Jess, and Chad Landis, the scheduled batters for the Railroaders. Arcana missing a chance to add to their lead in the top of the fourth. Jeremy Lewis gunned down at the plate. Dominic Regal on for a fourth inning of work. 
2 and 0 oh, the count. Regal ready, the 2 0 oh on the way, and it's 3 and 0. Oh. After giving up six runs through the first two innings, as Regal gets that across, the count three and one on Dirksen. Bradford settling down over the last couple of innings, although each inning, Arcanum getting a runner to third, but unable to punch him home. In fact, last inning, as we said, Lewis gunned down at the plate on an attempted double steal. Bowed back to the screen. So Regal battles back after a 3-0 count to get it to a full count. Three balls, two strikes, the count on Dirksen. Bottom of the fourth. So Dirksen issued the leadoff walk. And only the third walk issued by Regal here this morning, this afternoon. Unfortunately for the Trojans, the two previous came around to score. Also, that is the second time Dirksen has walked. He is obviously one of the runs scored for the Rotors. Count is 0-1 on Jess. Jess, a base hit in the second. He takes that a strike and I believe it's 0-2. No one out, taken high and away and the, the count is now 1-2. Well, the scoreboard's saying one and one, and it would have the one, the one foul back to the screen. It would have to be a ball, two strikes, and that has taken a strike. And Jess is a strikeout victim. Victim, he is caught looking. Chad Landis at bat now for the Rotors with one out, still. They do have a runner at first, and Derek Dirksen, Regal fires back, and in safely is Dirksen. Fouled back to the screen, and Dirksen was off to the races, but he'll have to go back to first. Owen won the count. Chad Landis at bat for Bradford. So we said Regal on for his fourth inning. Fires home. The 0-1 is taken. Just misses. It's even at 1-1. One one. Bradford down by four runs here in the inning, and that is a swing and a miss, and Landis falls behind a ball, two strikes. The one-two on the way, and that is just low, and it's even now at two and two. Regal readies from the stretch, fires the 2-2, a swing and a miss. And Landis is out on strikes for out number two. That is strikeout number six for Regal. Luke Cruz will step in now. He is 0 for 2, struck out in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the second. He 
swings and misses. Eric Dirksen issued the leadoff walk. But since then, Regal settling down, and that is a swing and a miss. Dirksen will reach second safely, but apparently a foul ball. So the count is 0-2 on Cruz, and Dirksen has to go back to first. Regal fires, taken outside, and on the throw down to second, Dirksen slides in safely. Dirksen reaches second on the wild pitch. A ball, two strikes, the count on Lee Cruz. Two gone here in the bottom of the fourth for Bradford. They are down, as we said, by four runs, 6-2. That taken inside a little tight, and it's even now 2-2. Two and two. Well, Bradford, after giving up six runs in the first couple of innings, they have really settled down, and Cruz is caught looking as... After giving up the leadoff walk to Derek Dirksen, Dominic Regal strikes out the side to end the fourth. After four complete, it's still Arcanum six, Bradford two. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum, by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison. Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville. McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville. Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum, Versailles and New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We go to the fifth for Arcanum. It will be scheduled Jason Byers, Darren Rogers, and Justin Hayes for the Trojans. It's a 6-2 ball game, Arcanum leading it. They scored six times in the first two innings, three in the first two, in the, or rather three more in the second. Bradford answered with two in the second, and that's where we stand right now. Trojans with a four-run lead. Jason Byers, the catcher, steps in for Arcanum. That line down the third base side, foul. It's an 0-1 count on Byers. Game number two on opening day of the King of the Hill Tournament. Parker just misses, and it's a ball and a strike now on Byers. The winner of this one will bat over Sales, a 12-zip winner over Greenville, and a surprise five-inning five run rule game. That is lifted high and into shallow left center field. Shortstop coming out to make the catch. One out. Byers out F6 if you're scoring with us. Making the catch Blake Maxwell.
grounded foul, first base side, and Rogers, the scheduled batter, but can't see if that is the number of the batter. He is down 0 and 1. Barker fires, just misses, and it's even at 1 and 1. Coming up next, Ansonia will play Mississippi game number three of this King of the Hill tournament. Taking a strike. And the count is now a ball, two strikes on Rogers. The one two on the way by Barker, and that's popped foul. And indeed, it is Darren Rogers at bat. Finally got a check of his numerical number on his back. Stays at one and two. Barker fires. Ripped up the middle. Actually to left field. Left center and Rogers reaches with a one out single. Justin Hayes will step in. As we said, one out. We are in the top of the fifth. Six two, the score. Arcanum leading this over Bradford. Barker readies, fires, taking a strike. Hayes down 0 and 1. One out, a runner on for the Trojans. Aaron Rodgers with the one out single just moments ago. Marker fires and swinging and missing is Justin Hayes. 0 and 2 is the count. Fouled back, straight back to the screen as it stays 0 and 2. My name's Mark Bixler. We're glad to be with you here this afternoon now. Game number two of the King of the Hill Tournament as that has taken a ball and Hayes now has a count of one and two. Barker readies from the stretch the one two and that is a chopper foul. Stays at one and two. Video being produced by M. Bixler Video Productions. Certainly glad to be with you here as we are now back in Ohio after spending six years in Alabama working in radio. Lifted high on the infield, but that is drifting foul, and it's out of play. So it remains one and two. Our Canavan Bradford here in game number two of the King of the Hill Tournament. We're at Sater Heights Park in Greenville. Taken outside, and the count is now even on Hayes at two balls, two strikes. Chris Sweeterman, first baseman, awaiting on deck for the Trojans. Barker readies the 2-2 on the way, and that is fouled back to the screen. So it stays, two balls, two strikes.
Parker steps off the mound, off the back side. Now back on, and we are ready. The 2-2 on the way. Swing and a miss. Two outs. Hayes is a strikeout victim, and that brings up Chris Sweeterman. He is officially 0 for 1. Reached on a fielder, has reached both times, reached on a fielder's choice in the second, and also a hits batsman, hit batsman. Marker flips to first as back in safely is Rogers. Marker eyeing his battery mate. Pete Bubeck. The throw to second, and in time, they get the out to end the inning. Rogers out two to four if you're scoring with us. I believe that was the second baseman that was there to make the play. Although it may have been indeed the shortstop, but I believe with Sweeterman, I believe being a right-hander, it was the second baseman. We've completed four and a half innings with the score, Arcanum leading Bradford six to two. Underwrite this event. The Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville. The Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison, Montage Cafe located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum Versailles in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Bottom of the fifth here at Sater Heights Park in Greenville. Arcanum leading Bradford 6-2. Derek Heise, Sean Gamble, and Pete Bubeck. The scheduled batters for Bradford. That's 2-3-4, and four, by the way, as Dominic Riggle on for a fifth inning. Heise takes a strike, and it's 0-1. Regal fires behind Heisey. And it's even now at one and one. Well, it started out, it's not that it's not a pleasant day right now because it still is. Although the sun, not quite as bright as it was earlier. Heisey swings and missed. And it's now a ball two strikes. Actually, with the sun not being out, it might make it a little more pleasant. Gets past the catcher, and it's taken inside as Byers couldn't quite find the handle. And the count is now even at 2-2. Two and two. My name's Mark Bixler. We're glad to be with you. The video being produced by M. Bixler Video Productions. Regal sets the 2-2 on the way, taken outside. It's now a full count. Three balls, two strikes now on Heisey. Leading off. That is hit to left field. It is caught. Ben Garbrig, Garbig rather, making that catch. And there's one away. Easy out. F7 if you're scoring with us is Sean Gamble set to step in now. Riggle sets, fires, 
Taken on the inside corner. Gamble down 0-1. Pete Bubeck due up next for Bradford. Riggle sets the 0-1 on the way, and that's fouled back to the screen. 0-2 is the count. One out. Take an eye and away, and it's now at one and two. Well, coming up next, Mississippi Wall will play and Sonia. Two teams of they've played already twice. Gamble is rung up, caught looking for out number two, and that will bring up Pete Bubeck. Having the two teams, as we said, that Ansonia and Mississippi having played already twice at least. And I know they have split the two games that I'm aware that they played. That has taken a ball, and Bubeck ahead in the count, 1 0. Josh Barker due up next. That has taken a strike, and the count now even on Barker at one and one, or on Bubeck rather. Barker due up next. Regal sets, fires. Ground ball up the middle. That is going to be a base hit. So Bubeck with the one out single, or two out single rather. Straight up the middle. Scott Taylor now at bat. You can just about bet that this will only be a substitution, just pinch hitting and Barker. Check that. Taylor into pinch run for Bubak. My apologies. Gotta pay attention better. As he is pinch running, and I have to check and see who is actually batting for Bradford. Cannot see the number, even though he's from the left side. Regal fires a chopper up the middle. They get. They do get the force. So Barker reaches on the fielder's choice if indeed that was Barker at bat. As I believe it was Taylor out six unassisted. I believe it was a shortstop there to make the play. And after five complete, Bradford leaving one stranded in the fifth. It's still Arcanum leading Bradford 6-2. to two. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville. The Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville, Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison, Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum, Versailles in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We go to the six, still Bradford trailing by four runs against the Trojans of Arcanum, 6-2 the score. For Arcanum, it will be 9-1-2, scheduled 
to bat is Chris Sweeterman, Dominic Regal, and assuming Luke Troutwine re-entered the ball game, he will be due up third. Sweeterman takes that. It's a ball, and it's 1-0. We are in the sixth, top half of the sixth. Ground ball, third base side foul, and it's even now at a one and one. My name's Mark Bixler. We are glad to be with you. This video, uh, this video being produced by M. Bixler Video Productions. Taken outside, it's now two balls and a strike on Sweeterman. That gets through to the fence. Sweeterman rounds first. He will head to second and will stay put. Now he is going to head to third and is in safely. So the Trojans with the leadoff double to start things off. He then heads to third. And that will bring up Dominic Regal, the pitcher. Six two is the score. Arcanum leading it by four runs. A well, leadoff runner standing at third base and Chris Sweeterman is Dominic Regal ready to step in for the Trojans. Regal was two for three. A base a double actually in the first, a base hit in the second, and then grounded out the third in the third. So actually making a plate appearance in the first three innings, but since then has yet to make a trip to the plate. So the railroad is settling down after the first couple of innings, actually. Trojans have yet to score since the second. Two balls, no strikes. That is the count on Regal. Still pitching Josh Barker for the Rotors. And the count is now 3-0 and on Regal. He is one ball away from putting runners at first and third for the Trojans. Will not happen now as Barker fires a strike and it's three balls and a strike. Barker readies the 3-1 on the way, taken in the dirt. Sweeterman making his way to the plate, and he will score safely as the walk is issued to Regal. So the first two runners have reached for Arcanum here in the sixth. It's now a 7-2 ball game. Nafo in now batting for the Trojans. Jason Ignafo. Batting from the left side. Barker readies. Taken low. I believe it's even now at one and one. Actually, they must have called that a strike. As they put up 0 and 2 on the scoreboard. I didn't think he took and I didn't think he signaled a strike. I believe it's one and one. Now they have the two strikes off and Although now they put up two balls, no strikes. I thought he fouled one off. Yeah. 
I'm really confused right now. I believe it's two and one, but they have one and two on the scoreboard. Outside, the throw to second, but not nearly in time as Regal in safely with the stolen base. Now it's three and one. I was right. That is a swing and a miss, and we have a full count. Todd Barton, the scheduled batter, next for Arcanum. That is taken high for ball four. So after the leadoff double by Sweeterman, back-to-back -back walks to Regal and then Ignafo. Todd Barton stepping in now for the Trojans. One run already in, nobody out, runners at first and second. Regal at first, or rather at second, Ignafo is at first. He swing, or rather Barton swings and misses, and he is down in the count 0-1. Trojans threatening a big inning here in the sixth. Gets past the catcher. Both runners will move up. Now with no one out, Arcanum with runners at second and third. Hit up the middle, one run will score, and Barton will stay put at, or rather Ignafo, Ignafo will stay put at second as Maxwell, if that is indeed who is still playing shortstop, and it is, had no place to go. As Barton drives in a run, the second of the inning is flip two first, not in time, gets past the catcher. Another run will score as Ignafo will score, and Ripple reaches on the fielder's choice. You know, hopefully we can get our scorebook caught up here. Barton reached on the base hit, but Gun down six to four on the fielder's choice for out number one. Nafo scored. Riffle, as we said, reaches on the fielder's choice, and Ben Garbig will step in. Three runs in in the inning. It's a nine two ball game. One out. Greg Riffle at first, Ben Garbig at bat for the Trojans. Barker fires, popped on the infield. Making the catch is second baseman Lou Cruz for out number two. And there's two outs. Derek Julian will now stride to the plate. Batting for Byers. Two outs. Julian swings and misses. 0 and 1 is the count. The 0 1 on the way, and that is up the middle. Parker picks it up, throws the first. That ends the inning, but not before Arcanum strikes for three more runs. After five and a half, it's Arcanum nine, 
Bradford six or Brad, rather Bradford two. It's nine two Arcanum. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville, Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison, Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for Sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It will be Blake Maxwell, Derek Dirksen, and Lee Jess. The scheduled batters for the Rotors. They now trail by 7-9-2. Dominic Regal on for a sixth inning of work as he fires a ball and it's 1-0. Taking a strike. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. Regal with eight strikeouts. Now with the count of, I believe it's a ball, two strikes. Regal trying to add to a strikeout count here tonight, this afternoon, as fires, and that is fouled back. It stays at one and two. Well, as we said, the winner will face for sales at 4.30 on May 8th. Right back here at Sater Heights Ballpark. Ground ball gets through. The long throw to first is not nearly in time as Darren Rogers now playing shortstop for the Trojans. Went deep into the hole to come up with that. So the leadoff base hit. Derek Dirksen will step in. Count on the scoreboard is one and one and one as Regal fires and that's ripped down the first base side foul. So Dirksen has a count of one and two. Leadoff runner having reached, and that is a swing and a miss. So Dirksen out on strikes for out number one, and that will bring up Lee, Lee Jess, who's one for two, and he is a strikeout victim back in the fourth. He also has a base hit. Nine 
9-2. The Trojans leading it by seven runs right now. Regal sets, fires. Jess takes a strike. He's down in the count, 0-1. Well, it'd be nice if you're a Trojan fan if you could entice a double play right here. Swing and I don't know if he might have got a piece of that, but I'm not exactly can't can't really sure. Shielded by the second baseman. John Dick. That is a pass ball and that allows Maxwell to move up to second. Actually a wild pitch. So it's even now at two and two. Check that, it was on a third strike, so had to have been because Jess is at first. DJ or Orsonio is now batting, or rather running for Jess. Batting for Landis. Is Josh Marshall. One and oh, the count. That is a fly ball to left center. It is caught. The throw to third is not in time, and everybody advances as they tag up. Barton making the catch. Runners now at second and third. Swing back to the top of the order. Lee, or rather Luke Cruz will step in. Bit tight, and it's 1-0. Regal readies the 1-0 on the way, and that's a swing and a miss. Count even at 1-1. One one. Cruz is 0 for 1 officially, actually 0 for 3. He did reach on a fielder's choice in the second, but other than that, has struck out twice. Caught looking last time, and he takes that low for a ball. And it's now two balls and a strike on Cruz. We are in the bottom of the six. That ball is ripped down the line. A base hit. One run will score. A second headed home. And will score. He does score before the tag out at second. We will wait to see if they are credited the two runs, and I believe they will be. Give Cruz a base hit. Out though, 9-4. Or 7-4, check that. For out number three, but they do score two runs. And after six complete, it's Arcanum 9, Bradford 4. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville. The Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event 
Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home in New Madison, Montage Cafe located in downtown Greenville, McKay Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. And we welcome you back here as a foul ball off of Darren Rogers' bat. Looked like it was going to hit him right in the small of his back, but instead caught his bat for a foul ball. Count evens at one and one on Rogers. Rogers is one for three. Was gunned down trying to steal back in the fifth after a base hit. Bit tight. As it's now two and one on Rogers. My name is Mark Bixler. We're certainly glad to be with you here from Greenville's Sater Heights Park. Marker readies the two one on the way or two two, and that's ground ball scooped up by the third baseman on to first. They get the out. One out. Derek Dirksen making that play as Justin Hayes will step in now. Well, a quick inning here and a quick inning next inning and Trojans would advance. Ground ball, that is deep into the hole, gets into left field. So the one out single. Justin Hayes with that. That will bring up Chris Sweeterman to the plate. Sweeterman doubled last inning. He has reached all three times he's been to the plate. One away. Trojans with a runner at first. Josh Barker fires a bit tight. Radford with scoring their four runs. Two in the second and two more in the sixth. Arcanum right now with one out, a runner on. Chris Sweeterman at bat. Marker readies the 1-1 one, one on the way, and that ball is lifted into left field or left center. It is caught for out number two. Dominic Regal will step in as Sweeterman is out F8 for the second out. Gets past the catcher and standing at second base is Justin Hayes. Taking second on the wild pitch. It's a count of 1-0 and oh on Riggle. Barker readies the 1-0 -oh on the way, and that is fouled out of play over the screen. It's a ball and a strike.
Trojans scoring three runs each in the first, second, and sixth inning. Bradford with two in the second and two in the sixth. We are in the top of the seventh with two away. Hayes will move on to third on the wild pitch. And the count is two and one on Regal. Nine four Arcanum right now with the lead. If it would end as is, the Trojans would face Versailles on May 8th, right back here at Sater Heights Park at 4.30 in a semifinal game. Chopper for third base side foul, and it stays at a full count. Three balls, two strikes. That is the count on Dominic Regal. Barker fires taken. That is ball four. And that will put runners now at first and third with two outs. Jason Ignafo, the throw through and safe at second is Regal, but Hayes staying put. He is staying at third. The count is, I believe, 1 0 on Ignafo. In the dirt, and Hayes not going any place. He will stay put. And F, in fact, I believe we have a hits bat, hit batsman, and that loads the bases. That will bring up Todd Barton. Barton. Three for four with three base hits. Base hits in the second, fourth, and sixth. Struck out back in the first. Popped foul, drifting out of play. First base side, and Barton down in the count 0 and 1. Coming up. Mississippi will battle Ansonia in the third game of the King of the Hill tournament. That ball's nailed to deep right field, and it's out of here. A grand slam. Todd Barton, a grand slam homer. Giving the Railroaders a 13, or actually, they now trail it 13 to 4. Todd Barton, the Grand Slam, thus far the only home run in this one. Versailles with three. And their shortened game against Greenville. Well, I tell you why, Todd Barton gave that ball a ride. A deep right center field. Greg Griffel, the batter, 2 0. That 
Bryant giving Arcanum a 13-4 lead. Chopper, third base side, but foul. Three and one, the count. Got through with the opening game and plenty of time, but this one may go a little long. That's a swing and a miss. It's a full count now on Riffle. Awaiting the bat is Ben Garbig. That's far. Four runs on only two hits. A ground ball hit to the shortstop. Maxwell on to first. They get the out. That ends the inning, but Arcanum, thanks to a grand slam by Todd Barton, now leads this 13-4 to over Bradford. We head to the bottom of the seventh. As we said, it's Arcanum 13, Bradford 4. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville. The Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville. Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home in New Madison, Montage Cafe located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum for sales in New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We welcome you back here to Sater Heights Park in Greenville, the site of the King of the Hill Tournament. That is fouled back. As it will be Derek Heisey leading off for the Rotors. That has taken a strike. And it's an 0-2 count on Heisey. Ground ball chopper. Rogers coming up with it, but not able to make a play. So the leadoff runner has reached with a base hit to start things off for Bradford. A base hit. Rob Krug steps in as Regal makes a play at first, but Heisey back in time. Rob Krug now batting. One and oh is the count. Count now even at one and one on Krug. My name's Mark Bixler. We are certainly glad to be with you. It's a 13-4 ball game. And with the first home run of the ball game, Chad, or rather Todd Barton. And it came with the bases loaded, a grand slam in the top of the seventh, giving Bra or Arcanum a 13-4 lead. The throw down to second as in safely is Heisey. And 
That's a ball, two strikes on Krug. Riggle fires and Krug swings and misses. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. Bubek at bat and takes the ball. It's 1-0. Ringle fires and a check swing, but could not hold it back. Bubek, the count is now even at 1-1. One and one. A big blow, although it Came with the Trojans already leading 9-4. Todd Barton, his grand slam in the top of the seventh. Any hopes that Bradford might have had. Was hurt by that blow by Barton. Throw back to second and in time, it's not in time, is back in safely as Heise. Still a ball, two strikes on Bubak. The one, two, and taken a bit low as the count now at two and two. Game number two of King of the the King of the Hill tournament here for Dark County Schools is taken high and away, and Regal now has a count of three and two on Bubak. Regal set from the stretch. The payoff on the way. Ground ball chopper right side, third base side, and they flip to first. They get the out. Heise will stay at second, and there are now two gone. Move back out one to three if you're scoring with us as Josh Barker will now step in. Barker from the left side. Regal a southpaw. Strike on the outside corner as Riggle gets ahead on Barker, 0-1. Riggle fires, a swing and a miss. Owen oh 2. Regal, the 0 2 taken high. A ball, two strikes now. Well, the rotor, rotors down to quite possibly their final at bat. Regal takes it home and it's low and away. 2 and 2. Two balls, two strikes, that is the count on Josh Barker. Regal fires, taken low, and Heise will go into third, the throw to third, and it gets away from the shortstop, Rogers, and Hayes, and Bradford gets a run. And right now, it is a full count on Josh Parker. Two 
Two away, nobody on, a run in for the rotors. Taken outside, and Barker draws the walk. After being down 0-2. Blake Maxwell now will step in for the Rotors. Popped on the infield, and that could very well be it. And indeed is. Making the catch is the second baseman, John Dick. That ends the ball game as Bradford, though, getting another run on one hit here in the bottom of the seventh. The final score, Bradford losing to Arcanum. 13 to 5. We'll be back and wrap up tonight's ball game in a moment. Helping underwrite this event, the Made Right Sandwich Shop, located on North Broadway in Greenville, the Ansonia Lumber Company, located on Main Street by Gilbert Feller's Funeral Home of Brookville, and Kreitzer Funeral Home of Arcanum by Greenville National Bank, with locations throughout Dark County. Cox Insurance, located in Ansonia and in Greenville, Homestretch Sportswear in Wapakoneta and St. Henry, and Ambixler Video Productions. Helping bring you this event, Oliver Floyd Funeral Home in Greenville and Pope Braun Funeral Home of New Madison, Montage Cafe, located in downtown Greenville, McCabe Painting Incorporated of Greenville, Osgood State Bank with several locations, Family Health Services, Greenville Arcanum, Versailles, and New Madison, State Farm Insurance, your agent, Jim Gable, and by M. Bixler Video Productions. We welcome you back here as we recap tonight's ball game. The final score of this afternoon's ball game. The final score, 13 to 5. Arcanum will advance on. They will battle Versailles here at 4:30. Friday, May 8th. Let's quickly recap tonight's ball game. The Trojans off to a quick start. Three runs in the first two innings. After an inning and a half, they led it six to nothing. Bradford, though, closed the gap. It was six two after two. It stayed that way until the sixth, when the Trojans struck for three runs, making it a nine two ball game. But then Bradford answered with a couple runs themselves, trimming it to nine to four. But Arcanum loading the bases, and that brought up Todd Barton. Barton with a drive to deep right center field, a grand slam, giving the Trojans a 13-4 lead, but that's not the way it stayed. Our Bradford generated a run in the bottom of the seventh, making it a 13-5 ball game, and that was how it ended. Again, the final score, Arcanum 13, Bradford 5. For M. Bixler Video Productions, I'm Mark Bixler saying so long, everybody.